I'm Phil Hill. And I'm Michael Feldstein. Welcome to eLiterate TV. So one of the interesting topics that we've covered and that's of interest in a lot of the transformation of education enabled by technology is dealing with team-based course design. It's been difficult for traditional schools and universities to move to a team-based course design, yet that's a central concept in a lot of the movements towards flipped classrooms, towards MOOC, towards um, online education, and a lot of the movements, and it's something that's not well understood. So we're here at Educause 2013, and we have the opportunity to talk to Vanessa Perry from George Washington University. And you've actually lived through this process. You've been a faculty member who's taught a traditional course, lecture-based. You've also done a flipped classroom course, and then you've taken some of that flipped classroom and actually applied it to a, another lecture-based course. But as part of that, you did team-based course design. So before we get to your experience, could you describe a little bit what were the drivers of going through this change in the first place? Why even attempt this program? The MBA marketplace has really changed. So one of the things that we realized is we absolutely had to think about going into online kinds of formats. Okay. And we have a couple of other master's programs that already have um, gone online, but they don't necessarily use the kind of technology that we thought was really going to work best for an all-new online sure. state-of-the-art MBA program. Um, but we saw it as a, a, not just a market opportunity, but a necessity. Necessity from the standpoint of that's what students are demanding, or it's a new world and we need to solve new problems? or It's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, students now just will not sit through traditional lecture kinds of formats. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that that really isn't a very effective pedagogical model anyway, but people still do it. Uh, but students are changing. They're increasingly using technology, want to use technology, they have it available to them. Sure. Why not take advantage of that? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was uh, part of our thinking. So now, given those changes, which you know, they sound great on paper, but one of the issues that's very interesting I'd like to get your thoughts on is, it's fine to say there's a reason for change, but then there's the issue of, well, we need to actually go through the change, particularly for a faculty member, where you're really presenting the material, guiding students. So tell me a little bit about the change from your perspective of what you used to teach, you know, your method used to be of teaching, and then getting into this flipped classroom method, particularly with working with a team for design, what you know, how did that change things? Well, you're right. It's one of those things. It does sound good on paper, mm -hmm. and so I'd heard that it was really easy. And you know, all you've got to do is take the stuff that you have and your powerpoints, and you know, just kind of record it, yep. and you know, it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be very much like what you have always done. Well, that is so absolutely not the case. Uh -huh. uh, it's nothing like what we've always done. I mean, traditionally, what I did was. You know, I looked at, I sort of accumulated materials over time. Uh -huh. I had my PowerPoint slides, and I would get up, and I would talk. And I would talk for 60 minutes or 75 minutes or for however long, and I would stop, and I would ask students questions. And it was semi-interactive, but it was pretty much traditional, you know, talk, right? One-way sure. kind of communication. What I had to do was go back through those materials and figure out what are the key elements that... I'm best at delivering via lecture Sure. versus now what are the elements that are probably best delivered some other way. Let's put this package together. This is a production. It's not like a class the sure. way that I, I'd thought about it. And that was a real transformation. Uh, a sure. real evolution, but it was certainly not easy at first. Well, not just easy. If I'm hearing you correctly, it was also somewhat unexpected. So was this a discovery process of, oh, this, was, this is what this means. I've got to figure this out sort of as I designed the course, or was this a, um, did you have to figure this out before you even got into trying to design the course this way? So how did you discover what it needed? Well, the most efficient thing would have been to know all this up front. It, it's kind of a, a dynamic process, and, and there is no one way to transform a traditional course into 
a, a kind of uh, documentary instructional format. There's sure. just no one way to do it, and every course is different, sure. and every instructor is different. But it was bumpy because I had no idea what to expect. Sure. And even if someone had told me, I probably wouldn't have listened anyway. Sure. Um, because you know, I feel like many you know faculty members. I've been doing this for years. I know what I'm doing. You sure. know, I don't need anyone to tell me what I'm doing. But it wasn't until I started to see some of the finished products that I figured out what the product was actually supposed to look like. Ah. And then that helped inform the next go round, uh, the next set of sessions, and then the next course. And so it was definitely a, a learning curve. Was there an element of cynicism or were you threatened in any way or skeptical as you got into this process? Or was it just a matter of, I know that it's, I'll discover something useful, but I have to go through it. So was there sort of any hesitation that you had? Oh, I was one of the people running around saying that, you know, this online instruction is never really going to work. and. I thought it was sort of this kind of low quality alternative mm -hmm. and I, I actually thought of it the same way that I thought about taking driver's ed refresher courses like I just you know yeah. just okay. I, I had no real experience so all I could draw on were, were a couple of anecdotal situations which were kind of these low quality kinds of lecture capture automated voiceover kinds of, of delivery mechanisms. And so I was completely skeptical. And okay. when our school decided that we were going to take this sort of strategic step, I was totally against it. Uh -huh. Somehow or another, I got convinced to uh, design the course. I'm um, not sure how that happened. But once I agreed to do it, I thought, you know, again, it was just going to be a matter of me being videotaped. Sure. The first day of videotaping, was one of the hardest days I can remember. It was so difficult. I was totally intimidated. Cameras pointing at me. Sure. I kept, you know, getting nervous and I felt like I was using a script and I've never used a script before mm -hmm. and uh, it was just a disaster. It took me, I don't know how long to do the first couple of segments. Sure. But after the first day, I started to see clips of sure. what it was going to look like. And that gave me a lot more confidence about how to yeah. go to the next step and move forward. So I've heard you almost describe two aha moments or I'm starting to get what the potential is. One is as you're going through the first course, you're starting to see some of the materials produced and it sounds like you're starting to realize, okay, I'm starting to get what this is like and what the potential is. But you mentioned a second element. When you taught the course a second time, that what were the changes that happened between the first course and the second course? How did you apply your learning or what was your experience that way? By the time I, and, and they were almost back to back, uh -huh. so, but by the time I started working on the second course, I knew exactly how to start. And so I could start pulling together materials in advance. So one of the things, for example, that you have to think about that I'd never really thought about before are all of the supplemental materials and video clips and, and readings and exercises that I'm not necessarily going to talk about specifically in the course of the mini lectures sure. that we do. And so I could then start to pull those together in advance. Sure. And so having those pulled together in advance, then I could move from that to sort of filling in the blanks as opposed to starting from scratch. And so it was much more efficient and I could move through it a lot more quickly. Great. So now I have a kind of system that, that works for me in transforming from the classroom to um, the uh, digital community format. And I also have an experience now with taking the digital community format and taking it back into the classroom. Sure. Because that's one of the other things that I did. I had sure. to teach a face-to-face -face course and I decided to use the digital community version in the face-to-face -face course and it went so much, uh, it went so well and yes. it went far better than I think teaching that course face-to-face -face has ever done before. So that's a, one of the threads that we've heard several times is there's an opportunity for learning from online education experiences that can even be applied back into the traditional classroom. So one final element I want to get to is you've talked about, um, I believe I've heard you say it's a new experience of teaching. What about just the fact that 
you're almost ceding some of your control of the course design to the team you're working with. Tell me how that experience goes, what your feeling was going into that and what you've learned, so what your current experience is in that type of team-based course design. Well, having a team is, is awesome. So I've never had a team before. It was always, you know, develop this course, teach it, maybe ask the students for some feedback, and usually that was at the tail end. But having a group of people who are experts, that know the technology, that know what's possible, that have sort of been down this road, and they can, you know, you can ask them questions and for input, and they have great ideas and, and, it, and are very, very creative. That has been awesome. Uh, such a refreshing change from what, you know, we're kind of used to with course development. That's awesome, but was it awesome at the beginning? In other words, or did you have skepticism going into this at the beginning about working with a team? And, who were they to say how I should change my course? Well, eh, not really, only because they didn't, it, it didn't work that way. I mean, it was still my course. I was okay. reminded all the time, you know, this is your course, what do you want? What do you think? How, should, how do you think this should go? It's just that I'm not that creative and I don't know a lot about the capabilities of technology. So it kind of started from that, but by, by the end of, I think, the first course, I was relying on members of the team to actually in, give me advice on actual course content kinds of things. Right. Um, so they went from kind of technical consultants to, you know, hey, let's, let's you know, work together. What do you, let's work together. What do you think the students are really going to uh, benefit from? So it almost sounds like a service model that it was easier to work with if the team was viewed as we're here to help support you in your role as opposed to you're just filling in this one component, we're doing this, so more of a service service approach. Absolutely, I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's the instructor's course, and so at no point did I ever feel like anybody was sort of uh, taking over. As a matter of fact, I wish somebody yeah. would have at, at, at many points along the way. Sure, so we've heard uh, quite a bit about this team-based course design, and we've heard a very positive experience here. So one of the questions, uh, that we'd like you to explore at your institution is, are you acknowledging the changing role that faculty have to go through for some of these new methods of education? And what are you providing or what is provided to actually support them in this new environment so that they can learn, so that they can flourish and figure out what's appropriate for your student base? So we'd like to hear your thoughts on what that challenge is at your institution. 